So anger is a part of everyday life. And in this episode, we're gonna look at the constructive and the destructive sides of anger. We're gonna look at um, a form of adrenaline called epinephrine. We're gonna look at some triggers and we're gonna look at how you can do anger healthily yourself and how you can respond healthily to other people when they're angry. And like we've all get triggered, right? We all have things that get us angry. For me, um, one of the triggers that people try on me uh, as a Christian and especially as a businessman is they try and like put um, crap on God, expecting that I'm gonna get mad about that. And I don't because he's big enough and ugly enough to, to look after himself. Actually, my triggers are more around honesty. That's something that can trigger me or when I'm just emotionally drained from the world around me that's sometimes when I overreact to things. So we're gonna look at a bit about all those things today and look at how we can do anger in constructive, healthy ways. Let's get into it. So with anger, we often think of anger as being a destructive emotion, but anger in and of itself can be really quite healthy. So at times though, we all use anger in destructive ways. Some people are like that firebrand, that short fuse, that really loud, angry, aggressive. Other people can be just as destructive, but do it with a quiet, withdrawn anger. They're silent treatment. And somewhere, most of us are in there, somewhere in between. So with anger, it can be both constructive and destructive. And we all have uh, things that trigger or bring up our anger. And the main three ones are either a fear, a frustration, or pain, either physical or emotional. And when I think about anger, for me, there's probably three main areas that my anger comes out. First one is sport, the second one is with my family, and the third one is at work. And I have different triggers and um, different ways I express anger in those three different areas of my life. So when we think about the destructive side of anger, what's often happening is we get a shot of a drug, kind of like an adrenaline called epinephrine. And when that epinephrine hits our system, we go into that fight, flight, or freeze response. And so often when we go into that response, one of the things that happens for us when we think about our brain, we have the emotional side of our brain in the middle there, and then we have our, our rational brain over the top. And when we hit that, get that sort of epinephrine into our brain, this is what happens. We flip our lid. That rational side of your brain all of a sudden gets disengaged and all you've got left is your irrational part of your brain. And that's the times that we do destructive things. So I say some really awful things sometimes to my wife and my kids. I do. I, I, I can be quite destructive when I'm angry. And so I'm sure you can think about times in your life where you don't think like, why did I do that? but you're, not, you're, you're literally not thinking about it. You're not being rational. You're just reacting with emotion. And so one of the things we can do to be constructive with our anger is to actually think about what are the triggers? What are the things that um, trigger you into that irrational response? So if I think about uh, sport, for me, whether it's surfing, and some little grommy like paddles past me in the lineup. It's called a lineup for a reason, right? You meant to line up and he thinks he should snake my wave. That brings that frustration and I can feel that trigger, that, that anger rising. Sometimes with work and family, I'll have had a few hard things happen during the day at work and then one of my kids will do something small and frustrating, but I'll give them that massive reaction because I was already building up and I could feel that anger was getting large inside me and I only took a little trigger to get an overreaction. And so one of the healthy things we can do with our anger is become aware of our triggers. And if we're aware of our triggers, then we can minimize their impact and we can take responsibility for them. So a healthy thing for me to do when I get home from work, if I've had a really bad day, is not probably to talk to my wife and kids at that moment, but to go away and to do something to, to actually drain some of that frustration that's already there. Because actually having a conversation when my frustration levels are here, it's not gonna take much to trigger an overreaction. And I'm sure you've got lots of ways in your life that things build up. So you need to have other things in your life that you can do to actually release that pressure before you release it on somebody um, that doesn't deserve it. Now sometimes with our overreactions or when we have that 
shot of adrenaline, that epinephrine, um, it can come through pain as well. So like a, a sudden reaction to something. So when we have been destructive with our anger, when we have flipped our lid, the thing is that we've caused some destruction, some chaos. Now, if I've punched a wall, I've left some damage. I also leave damage with my words and my actions when I'm angry. And when it's with a person, same thing is needed. Just like that wall needs repairing, that person, that relationship needs some repairing as well. If you just ignore it, it's like putting a painting over that hole in the wall, it's still there, it hasn't gone anywhere. You might not be able to see it at the moment, but at some stage, if you keep putting enough holes in the wall, you're just gonna have pictures everywhere. If you, with your anger, keep making holes in the people around you, and you don't ever apologize, if you don't ever repair that relationship, you're gonna end up with a lot of holes in the people around you and in your relationships. So it's vital we repair it. And we'll come back to that in another episode of Messy, where we will talk about how to have healthy, constructive apologies as well, to bring that restoration, to bring that repair. When it comes to anger, one of the things we try to do is the impossible. Often we will try to have a rational conversation with an irrational person. So someone's angry, their lid is flipped, they've got no capacity to be rational, but in that moment we try to have a rational conversation with them and we wonder why they get more upset and then we allow that to get us more upset. So if someone has flipped their lid, what you want to do is not try to be rational with them but you want to be calm and you want to give them time and it takes about two minutes if you don't re-trigger them again for their brain to actually re-engage and they have the capacity to be rational. So don't try the impossible, don't try to speak rationally to someone who can't speak rationally back, wait, give them the time, give them the space. Maybe you need to walk away and say, let's have this conversation again in five minutes. If you're the person that's being irrational and you are kind of aware of it, you too can actually move away from that conversation, move away from that situation until your rational brain kicks in. It's actually really healthy to be angry about certain things. One of my mentors talks about how one time at a conference, he was, um, asked something really racist and he got really angry. And instead of actually addressing that, that comment, that conversation right then, he took a deep breath, he talked about some other things and when he actually became more rational again, then he addressed the racist comment. Being angry about the racist comment was really healthy, but actually addressing the racist comment while angry was only ever gonna be more destructive. So while being angry is healthy, actually addressing things in that state not so healthy. So we want to hold people accountable for their angry behavior. But like we said before, you don't want to hold them accountable while they're being um, dysregulated or they're being really emotional. If it's your, your kid or your partner or someone you work with, you want to wait until that person has come back to that calm, rational place before you have that conversation and then hold them accountable. Holding someone accountable with it like this ain't gonna happen. And I'm sure if you're a parent, you've tried this before, having that conversation about the discipline of what you want that child to do when they're all heightened, it just doesn't work. It doesn't work with your partner. It doesn't work with your work colleague as well. So wait, if you actually want it to be constructive, wait until they're back in a rational place and then have that accountability conversation. So I hope that's been really helpful to think a little bit about anger. Um, understanding epinephrine triggers and the way my anger works has been super productive for me in my work life and also in my personal life as well. I hope this has helped you. If you've got other tricks and tips that you use to actually deal with your anger well um, or deal with other people's anger well, love to hear about it in the comments below. And um, yeah, hope this has been a really informative and uh, yeah, constructive conversation for you. Thanks heaps.